Good evening, everyone. We'll be starting so shortly. National, national anthem. Mm -hmm. uh, good evening, everyone. We'll be starting shortly. I think we're having a little bit of technical challenges. How is everyone doing today? Thank you for joining. Uh, Pastor Itwa will be in shortly. We're trying to get his connection straight. So we'll would just have a minute uh, or two of the national anthem to get started. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are glad you're here. Uh, Mr. President will be joining us shortly. 
but just for us to continue, he I mean, once they sort out his device, then he would he would join us. We are so glad that you're here. This is a very, very special session. So I'd like to bring um Miss Yetunde Makoli up to introduce our guest and to kind of give us a background of what we'll be discussing today. Yetunde is coordinating our youth um, engagement program here at ALG, and uh, she would just give you the background and introduce the guest. Go ahead, uh, Yetunde, please come up. Good evening, everyone. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to be doing this with us this evening. This is Akali, and um, like um, the VP already said, um, I've been coordinating the um, engagement activities. And um, last week, Saturday was our first interest birthday, and we, the youth, that uh, what's about the girl? Yeah, I'll put it like that. <laughs> we were uh, privileged to um, organize and, um, yeah, uh, the fun fun program at the Ali Moshabuki government last Saturday, which is the 26th. That's was the first of the day. And um, the volunteers that, you know, coordinated alongside with me were the members of the Nigerian Youth Service Corporation and they are here. So today we are going to be talking about our experience. Well, um, while many of them are in here, all of the volunteers are in here today, two of them will be representing at the beginning and while others will come in and share their points of view and um, make their comments and, you know, um, but yeah, make their comments on how the whole event went. Yes. Um what seems like we like what seems like um a bad event, of course, we were able to pick several learning points, learning points, and uh, we're working on building on it and you know, seizing that opportunity to make that change that we want and then the youth, you know, in agreement. Um, agreed to do this today to share their voice and to share uh, their concerns about what they experienced last Saturday. Um, today we have um, Joshua and Peace in the house. They're going to be educating us, uh, giving us information on, you know, their experience because they had a lot of experience. Yeah, prior to that, they, they have... Um, some challenges with, you know, um, the way we run things in this country. And then, you know, <laughs> they make comments like, yeah, they've been seeing a lot of things, but today they confirmed, you know, where so, I was so interested in the fact that they had some things at the back of their mind. And on Saturday, they confirmed, you know, the reality of this um, ideas, notions, information that they have been hearing about, you know, today politics and um, governance, that's administration. Let's look at the administrators and the politicians, how they run this country. So today, uh, welcome with me, um, Peace, Vic, and um, Joshua Akinwande, Akinwande, rather, that'll be taking us, that'll be responding to the events of Saturday, giving us insights, and then supported by other volunteers who are also you focus. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, mm, I don't know if Pastor is in now. Uh, and just to also thank all the youth coppers uh, that volunteered for that uh, Feed a Neighbor Feed a Nation initiative, uh, which is part of um, Tri-Africa Empowerment Social Responsibility. And I, it's part of our uh, Citizens' Responsibility Campaign and we are very glad that the youths took it up. So Pastor Itwa is in. And so this is the conversation with them about their citizens' engagement and lessons learned and recommendations going forward. Over to you, sir. 
All the technology issues and uh, this and that. But okay, thank you. Is, is, is he full? Okay. Uh, we're, yes. we're engaging our, our youth. Can you hear me? Yeah, maybe you can want you to turn me? off your... Yeah, maybe you want to turn off your video for a minute so that we can hear you, you, you more because it's coming out shaky. Or is it me? Is his voice coming out Can you out hear me? Shaky? Yeah, we can hear you better now. Yes. Go ahead, can you go. hear me? Yes. We can hear you, sir. Thank you. All right. So um, I, want to, I want to engage our youth and challenge them citizens' responsibility and see exactly where we're going and how the youth feel and which direction Nigeria is at this point in time. Um, it's very, very important. If they make up 70% of our population, it's important that we have them on the table, we have them on the cards, and we know exactly what is going on. So I want to welcome everybody here. Uh, it's important that we as citizens of Nigeria take charge and take responsibility for where Nigeria is going. One of the one of the challenges we're having now is number one, ignorance. A lot of Nigerians are quite ignorant about what is going on in Nigeria. They're not, they're, they're not well informed and they're not engaged. The other one is that people are indifferent and there's a bit of lethargy, uh, whether we admit it or not as to exactly where we are in Nigeria and what's going on. So these are the things we're trying to challenge our youth. Also, uh, over in trying to do some of our citizens' engagement and community responsibility, we had some kinds of challenges that we didn't envisage. So we really want to see where we're going. One thing I know and one thing I keep repeating all the time is that if there's not enough awareness, if there's not enough education, if there's not enough involvement at different levels in this country, we will be begging the question. We will be begging the question. Everybody needs to get involved at local government, at uh, what you may call grassroots, at uh, councillorship levels, and so on and so forth. Very, very critical. Very, very important. Let me bring on Yetunde Macaulay. I think she's on the platform and she'll be introducing our youth who are going to be engaging us this evening for, for this discussion. Well, evening in Nigeria, I guess it's morning or midday in California and it's probably uh, nighttime in other parts of the world. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Is it today there? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I really it. Okay. So, once again, good evening, everyone. So, with us on this call is uh, Betty Pupis and Joshua Akinwamide. Uh, we're going to be engaging them on um, their road. Yeah, because they already started as youth coppers. They volunteered to join the Fan Fan to Drive campaign on Pastor Itwa's birthday, which is on the 6th of April, at the Ali Mosho local government area. And we had a lot of experiences. Um, some, yeah, we were not prepared for. Uh, yeah, most of it we were not prepared for because we went there hoping that we're going to have a very fantastic and amazing experience and, you know, celebrating Pastor's birthday with the less privileged people and usually at the grassroots level. But unfortunately, we had some hiccups that were so unbelievable. And so together at the end of the program, yeah, which was, uh, we're a little bit um, disappointed or very disappointed. And then we thought about it and felt like, okay, this is what bringing to the platform today for a discussion to share how the young people feel about how the grassroots is doing what 
they are supposed to be doing poorly. And, you know, we're going to be talking, uh, they're going to be sharing also with us today what they believe and expect, you know, citizens' responsibility should be and how it should be done um, at the individual level. And then, you know, um, sharing from their experience on Saturday, they will tell us also what their disappointments were and then how they think, you know, we should, you know, um, um, tackle the, the, the issue and how we should contribute to our community as citizens, every one of us, every one of us. And that's why they decided to join us. So in addition to, um, alongside Vertical Peace and Akiwande Joshua, there are other youth members also that will also be contributing this evening. So one, I want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you to the uh, elderly ones here and the youths that are here on this platform uh, for giving us this opportunity, you know, to lend our voice. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yesterday, and thank you for all that you've been doing. So let me quickly call upon our guests, Akiwande, uh, uh, to come and begin to engage us and let's have a conversation. Akiwande, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, thank you very much, Akiwande. Um, they describe youth as people who are under 30. Please assure me that you are under 30 or perhaps under 35, Akiwande. Yes, I'm very well under 30. Okay. What do you do right now? Right now, I'm a youth core member and um, I'm currently working at my PPA and also doing my community development service alongside it. Okay. So, um, what did you study? Which university did you go to? Okay. I finished from Obafemi Awolo University and I studied accounting. So, well, sorry, are you going to be a chartered accountant and what's your plan? Okay, yes, sir. I'm currently in my final stage of, of my ICANN. So I'm looking forward to um, clearing this stage this year and having more professional certifications. Okay, make sure you clear it all, okay? Yes, sir. All right, I'm very pleased to be engaging with you today. Um, right now, you are doing youth core. Let me just ask you a side question. What is your impression about youth core? What's your opinion about youth core? Do you think it's delivering the kind of value that we want at this time in Nigeria? Um, first, I would like to um, appreciate on this platform. Thank you so much, sir, and our distinguished guest and everyone on this call. Um, so as regards the question, um, I will say yes and I will say no because um, firstly, the, the NO was established to um, promote diversity, um, to put um, in, um, and environment and making the where they are posted to rather than really but being situated now there are that's value that in the open achieve is there not being covered because there are areas where people don't want to risk their lives to go to. So they find loopholes in the system and they get posted to safer places. And these loopholes are only born because security. Because when I was engaging with my dad and he was telling me that um, before there was, there was no loophole in the system. NYS it is anywhere they are that you go and serve. But because of the insecurity, they have allowed it sort of because so some people still get to serve and 
and improve the community where they are posted to. But then, on the other hand, we don't do that service. We just want to um, get it and just get it over with. Okay. Thank you very much, Akumadi. Let me bring on right now Peace, Betty Ku. I don't know if she's there. If you are there, please give us a shout out and let us know that you are here. Good evening, Please. sir. I'm, I'm, here. I'm here, sir. Yeah, here. Yeah. Tell, tell us yeah. a little bit about yourself. What are you doing now? What did you study? Uh, you Please tell me that you qualify to be a youth at this point in time. Okay, sir. My name is Betty Kupis. I'm a seven core member. I finished from Adekule Ajati University of Koko. I studied industrial chemistry. And I'm qualified to be a youth, sir. All right, very good. What What are you thinking of becoming? What's your vision? What's your wh How do you see life, and what do you want Nigeria to do for you? My vision is creating problems and solving problems for solving problems for um, for to reduce env environmental pollution. Actually. Like now we see that this environmental pollution is what is causing most of the global problems that we are having now. So if there are less of these environmental problems, I think the environment will be safe for us to live in. That's one. And having Nigeria be a better place for us to live in too, because there's nowhere we can actually run to. This is our home. And if this place is not safe for us, there's nowhere we can actually run to. Sure. Okay, I haven't said that. What's your thoughts about Nigeria? Where is Nigeria? Are you enjoying Nigeria? Uh, are you disappointed? Are you encouraged? Uh, what do you think about Nigeria right now? Uh, at some point, I'm like, I'm disappointed. And on the other end, I'm also encouraged because the Nigeria we head of is a very great nation. And as it is now, what we see is not what we actually heard of. But I, I believe that if the right people are in the system, which are we, the youths and the people in power, the Nigeria we actually heard of can actually be better. I didn't get that. I said uh, the, the Nigeria, I, I said I'm disappointed, and at the same time, I am not. Because uh, if we actually have and get the right people in system, which are the leaders of tomorrow, the youth, and the people in power, we can actually see the Nigeria we heard of. But as it is now, the Nigeria we actually heard of is not what we are seeing at the moment. What Nigeria did you hear of? The Nigeria we heard of is a place that is rich in resources, that is that the government hear the people out, there is democracy and all. But now the Nigeria we hear of, the Nigeria we are in right now is not is nothing short of what we are hearing at the moment because the voices are not being heard, there is no democracy as it is now, and the government are not actually even helping. We ourselves, the youth, the leaders of tomorrow are not actually helping. Okay. Um, what do you understand by citizens' responsibility? Okay, so uh, citizens' responsibility are the things we, the citizens, the roles we have to play in our society, in our community, and everywhere we find ourselves. To make that place a stable, a enjoyable place for us to, to be in. OK, is it the citizens that are responsible for that, or is it the government? Or what do you think the citizens' role should be in our nation? And what do you think the role of the government should be? 
the citizens' role are actually different from the government's role. I think the citizens' role are what the citizens themselves should do. The citizens' role, example, are um, engaging, making the place um, they live in a, a good place, being enlightened about the place they are. And the government, the government's role should be to make the country providing um, free, um, sorry, providing the, 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 the country we actually hope and expect of making the citizen have a, a make that, making the citizen's voice being heard and working towards what we actually say, not just being, not just hearing what we are saying, but also putting, imputing what the citizens say into action. Okay, let me come back to you, Joshua Kiwan. Um, what's your opinion of the performance of government thus far? Uh, please bear in mind that we have right now a new government. Uh, we had eight years of Buhari. We had six years or so of Jonathan. We had two or three years of Yaradua. We had about eight years of Abbasan John. What, 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 I don't know how many of these governments you witnessed and things. What's your opinion of what you think governance is in Nigeria at this point in time? Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. One thing that is synonymous with the governments I've witnessed, I think, from your point, is um, the rise in the level of corruption. Aside that, the, another thing is lack of empathy on the citizens in the sense that you can make policies, you can, you can promote public awareness, you can provide access to even a justice system and so on, but all this cannot be fulfilled if there is lack of ethical leadership. And that's one thing that I've noticed in all this government. There is, I'm talking of ethical leadership, we're talking of there's no honesty, there's no transparency, no accountability, no integrity. Everything is just done without having mercy on the man. Policies are just, things are just, look, look at the, um, the situation we had last year, and we're talking about change of the naira all of a sudden turmoil naira was scarce people were hungry people were people were had money that they could not people were not accepting those that are selling goods those um those, so when you make such decisions you don't go into the grassroots you don't look at those people right there in the villages, how are they going to survive if we, you have just one bank in a whole community or even in the whole local government, you have just one bank. How do you want them to go and change their notes so suddenly? So those those things, when I look at them, I just see that it's just a lack of empathy on the part of the leadership. Why do you think the leader, uh, leadership has this, uh, what you have described as a lack of empathy? What do you think is responsible for that? I just think is, is some of it is, or most of it is, is, but then it's not ignorance per se, because um, I believe that there is no um, inclusive of various um, part of the society. When you look at the um, less privileged, for example, less privileged, for example, they don't have a voice, per se, because looking at the experience that we had on Saturday, we saw the blind, the deaf, and the dumb. They came quite early for the um for the initiative for the program 
And you could see that, okay, these people, the way they were discussing with each other, they are a community. But then they don't have a representative to even help them. Um, there's no representative that is involved in that system, in that local government that can help them secure their rights. We don't have, because when we were like, okay, you guys should come, um, we need to attend to them. They were like, they should wait for it. Like, there was this lack of empathy, like, they should wait. We're going to answer them. And these people were waiting. They are the people that need it. But then they were giving it to people that actually didn't need it just to pay back the favors that those have provided for them. Okay, let me go back to vertical peace now. Betiko, uh, peace. Were you at that uh, program on Saturday, and what's your opinion of what happened there? Is she there? Or is she gone off? Betiko. He's trying to unmute. Okay, is she having difficulty on music? Um, that's okay, what I'm sir. checking. I'm here, sir. Yeah, go ahead, please. So I was actually there on Saturday, and what we actually saw was um, the political people trying to change the um, the real reason for why we were there, using it as a means of political strategy for them for their own selfish gain. That's what I saw it as. Because we actually saw the people that actually needed these palliatives. And we saw those that did not, if we could, if we could actually say from what we saw, they did not need it. But there, are, there were also people that really needed these things. But for selfish political gain, they actually diverted the real reason for why we were there. And this was, it, it really spoke so bad that uh, there was no representative. Madame Mato, today really tried to like see to the real reason being portrayed. But it, it looked like she did, not, she did not even have a say because we were in their home and there was little or nothing we could do about, about it. So are you saying that some of the things you brought did not go to the right people? Yes, sir. Some of them didn't go to the right people, sir. Because it's got to a point whereby we're trying to we're trying to retrieve some packages. And uh, I will not mention names though. A woman, a grown woman that did not actually need this, she was trying to like struggle with us which didn't even speak well. Hmm. Okay, so what do you think the local government was trying to do, or what do you think was responsible for that kind of behavior and conduct that day? Uh, I think they were trying to like turn it into a political thing. Because the way I saw it happen on Saturday, it looked like they already planned themselves well. They saw this as a means of um, making people see that these palaces were coming from the local government people. Because when we were even speaking to them, it looked like we were saying nonsense. If they had, I don't know, it really looked like it was coming from the local government people. We had our banners erected and everything. We placed our stickers on the bags, but it did not really end well. Okay, so let me go back to you, my boss, Mr. Joshua. What do you think the youth should do at this point? And what role do you think the youth should play in our country, Nigeria? And then also give me an idea of why you think the local government behaved that way this last Saturday. Although I don't want us to dwell too much on that, but let's see how we can go forward. Thank you. Okay, so I'll begin with the later part of um, your question as regards what really went on. 
why they behave the way they do on Saturday. I will just tag you to um, this information because they were formed. members or many members of the, I won't say all the members, that originally did not know what the program was all about. They thought that it was a palliative program from the local government in conjunction with its government. It was later after we had gone home, we saw a flyer that they had circulated around that put the um, image of the local government chairman and the state government, state governor, saying they are, they are going to be giving out 500 palliatives or palliatives to members of the local government. So um, I will just say the role of the youth. As we all know, we, uh, we bring fresh, we bring energy. There is this, there is this exuberance of wanting to challenge the status quo, yeah, change the status quo, change the existing norms, and bring innovative ideas to the table. But then I also noticed that when we are talking about involving youths in involving youth in decision making, many of us or many of our leaders they just think it's at the federal level. But with what I saw on that actually start from, from the local level down to the community development areas. I just see that if youths are made as part of this decision making, not just youths, youths that are the value that have shown um, proof of their personal development. I you know that, okay, yes, this youth is capable. This youth is, is able, is, is able to fill this role. Select those people, make them part of each level of at every level, not just at the federal level. Because when they are at from the local level, they're able to connect with the people. They're able to, they're able to exchange ideas with the people. And then there is participation with the government. And then that way, you build it up. Joshua, are you still there? Some am still here, sir. Yeah. Have you finished? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let me turn this question back over to Peace. What do you think the youth in Nigeria should do to um, bring about the kind of change or the kind of Nigeria that they want? Okay, thank you, sir. I think um, what Nigeria should actually do is that we see this as a responsibility. We should have a good mindset. If we don't really have a good mindset about this, <laughs> we go nowhere. Sir. We should have a good mindset. We should also be enlightened about being civil engaged. We should engage civil, participate in politics, we should also make sure that we that we want to be in position of this power. We should also obey the rules and regulations. Because the truth is, the problem starts from actually the family. Because it's a person that represents the family at the local level, the state, the federal level. It starts like that. If we don't get the right orientation from the start, we are going nowhere. We will just keep going over the circles on and on. We should go, we should be close to um, people that are in power. Making they should create room for youth, giving us a room for engagement. But if we keep saying, okay, the youth should be in power, the youth people that are both, if they don't create a room for the youth, instead. There's nothing we can do. We'll just keep talking and our words will go nowhere. We should be engaged. We should also get the right orientation. We should yeah, get the right orientation. Sir, and which is them? Go ahead, yeah. 
we should get the right orientation. We should not just say, okay, we uh, the people that are in power, because before the people that got to power are there, they were also like, ones like us. And they, they I'm sure they had these things about youth are the leaders of tomorrow, youths are the one that can change and all that. If we keep seeing this, this leadership thing as how it continue going on and on, we will move nowhere. And we we just have to have the right mentality about what the social um, responsibility and um, citizen responsibility should be. Why you keep saying we, we, we? So who will build the cart? Who will take charge? Which youth groups will take charge? Uh, what are you guys going to do? You are going to finish your youth call very soon. What's your plan? Uh, what's your plan for Nigeria? Well, uh, like I said earlier, sir, my plan for Nigeria is actually to reduce waste pollution, making the environment a very good place to live in. Because most of what we are facing now is due to environmental pollution. And it's really affecting us. It's really hitting us hard in Nigeria. I don't know about other parts of the country, but like I say, most 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 countries are actually facing problems with waste, pollution, and all. If we can actually work together to make the the society, the community, a, a good place to live, I think that is okay, sir. That's what I have, sir. Okay, let me ask uh, Joshua this last question. Then I'm going to turn it over to either Jumoke or Yetunde to uh, take over the discussion on the challenges and the solution and get the other youth coppers who are on the platform also sort of uh, engaged uh, in, this, in this program. So if you're a youth copper, you're a youth, and you want to make a contribution or a comment, Please, I'm going to ask you right now to put up your hand electronically so that we can call you and get you to, to speak. What I want, what I want please to ask me is that what is the roadmap? What is your plan? What is your intention? How are we going to get Nigeria to become what you want Nigeria to become? Joshua, are you still there? Maybe he's having problems with connectivity. Okay, I'm yes, sir. No. All right, Joshua, talk to me. Okay, um, for me, and um, I've interacted with like minds, like-minded youth, and there is something that that is synonymous with all our discussions. And it's something that has to do with accountability. A system, that accountability is a system that works. Once there is no system where someone is not accountable, there's no way the will um, do what he's supposed to do. Ensure that, because it's across all levels and all arms of government, talking about the legislative, the executive, and the judiciary. If we have a judicial system that works, if we have a judicial system that does not take too long to make judgments on certain cases, we have a judicial system that is fair. We have a judicial system that, that one can easily run. To, I, I was, um, I want to take an example of America now. And in America, we have a system where the father can sue his son because he feels that um, the father has. We have a system where if you do that is wrong, immediately the consequences follow. But when there is a system where there are no consequences, where, where you don't even reap what you sow. Oh. 
system where a person to this um this to this organization or to this um system put up a system where there is diversity there is um inclusivity and the fact that every community whether it's the less privileged the blind the deaf and dumb the youths the tribes everyone has representation you come together you all know the needs of their specific they come together and lead down their issue and the real problems that they are facing that way we can actually make a difference but when there's just a system where they just do things without even considering or if you just look so strange people just be like what is this going on what is going on Okay. Um, Jim, okay. Yes, sir. I think there's a guy called Matthew Olani on the platform. Do you want to yeah. engage others on the platform to get their thoughts, please? Yeah, thank you, sir. And I, I think I also want to say thank you for um, giving us this opportunity to really speak uh, for them to be able to express for the youth. So these are the youths that signed up to be engaged with the Africa Leadership Group in nation building. Uh, we had an outreach uh, with them uh, during the youth call and I, I think 144 of them signed up. Some of them are taking PM classes. Some of them are taking uh, the citizens responsibility uh, course and also financial management. I think why this is important is when we put a call out for volunteers to go to Alimo show to help distribute um, the 500 palliatives through Fan Fan, these young, great people raised their hands and they signed up for it without compensation. They were not looking to be paid. They were continuing to serve. And um, why this is important for us to have this conversation is I'm on the platform with them and the experience was I, I was quite traumatic. And, and I think one of the comments I heard was nothing would change. And we said at Africa Leadership, part of our mission is accountability. When these things happen, we want to be able to speak about it. We want to hold people um, accountable for their actions. So for them to come up here, they, they were threatened. Uh, a lot of them were threatened. Uh, they, are, they caught some of the threats on video. Um, and not even, and we had, we asked them to put on their youth cap, um, their face cap, just to identify them as youth coppers. And they wore a white t-shirt. So they were branded. They knew that these were the youths. But even at that, they were kind of rough handled. I just wanted to put that there. So for them to come on this platform and speak really speaks to their courage. So we want to applaud you for their for your courage and to let you know that we will continue to stand with you as you speak up respectfully and with integrity and um also with accountability. So thank you for that. I want to go back to some of the conversations we had on the platform. What would you have seen as, as a youth if you had the authority to change anything with your experience on Saturday? What would you change? So uh, maybe Matthew, I, I, Matthew, I can, I can put that question to you. Caleb is also on and maybe Caleb can also chime in. Matthew, go ahead. You are, you've, I've asked you to unmute. What would you change based on your experience on Saturday? Matthew? Okay, I think we lost him. Is Caleb on? Okay. Uh, who, is, who is here? I can't see everyone. I'm here, I'm here, Ma. Okay, go ahead. What, what would you change? Okay, Caleb, go ahead. What would you change based on your experience on Saturday? What are your recommendations going forward? If we had an opportunity to speak to the local government council and their representatives there, what is your message to them as to what you would like to see change?
Are you who's speaking? I can't hear you, Caleb. Please speak up. Yeah, speak up. Okay. Once again, I say good. Um, good evening, everyone. So, with, with my students on Saturday, as I said, one of the major changes I think I will love to implement is if I'm given the privilege to. Or with local government, as ever we wish or pray for our nation to be, it starts with us. And that, like, they also need to be sensitized by giving them the right notion that whatever position they are holding is to serve. And the best, the best way to be a leader is by serving. You serve as a leader. You are like a servant leader. So if they must if they must lead by an example, the change must start with them because number one, the qualities of a good of a good, lead, of a good leader is one of these. Is you serving like you you, you self denial like you position you are holding as a leader. You able to deny yourself and you able to hear, hear the people you are leading out, know the know, know how they feel, their need, and that's one of the reason why that's one of the things I, I guess the this organization is trying to meet the need of the, the, the less privileged in the community, and they they see they feel how they put it, how they, they know how the people out there feel, like the feeling of you know having something to eat, like being uh, enjoying the your, your the rights you ought to as a as a citizen of a particular nation or a country per se. So, in in a GIF, in summary. I'll let them know that the change we expect starts with them as our leader, and they lead by example. Because from the experience I have Saturday, everything they portray there is not a good attribute of or a good leader. Because right there in your little corner, with the little privilege you are given to lead, in, in, that is in quote, serve people. You should serve with love, and you should serve with self denial. I don't know if you, if you get me. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank the you. The ability to, to have these attributes, we help them to, to put the people they are leading first and not themselves. So with that, we should we should need to sensitize. Even our leaders, they need sensitization, like giving them a, a, a good mindset of what true leadership entails. Thank you. I think for now. Thank you. I'm going to ask you one last question, just following up on that, and we'll open it up. So what encouraged or inspired you to be able to speak up against, I mean, speak up about your experience and come to an open platform um, to speak up, to say, this is not right. What, what, what inspired or encouraged you to do that? Okay, first, um, the major thing that inspired me is that I've always been seeking a privilege to, to help, like to help the needy and, and, when I'm not giving this privilege to do that, I I got um how will I put it? I I I received the I the, my expectation from the level of leadership that we encountered. I was just I was I was taken aback, like surprised with the with the actions and which I least expected. So with the passion that I have to work to volunteer, yes, to see that this is the privilege I have to serve. Some of the privileges I'm giving to serve my nation in that my little corner. And now me willing to serve, getting a feedback, a, like a reaction of like what I'm doing is, is not like how I put it. Mm. In a way, I'm giving it when you are seeking for a privilege to do something, and finally the opportunity comes to do that thing. And the, the people in, in quotes in power that that are that, that in, in authority that you expect should be a, a right channel, a right avenue, should even be like a backup. Yes, like they should be the people pro supporting you that, yes, oh, what you are doing is right, you know, but they're not the people doing otherwise. So that alone, I felt I felt the pain within me. That... Okay. No, okay. This, this should not continue. This should not be doing is wrong. And if, if, if by the grace of God, you need to put a stop to it. Thank you. Thank you for speaking up. And I think 
um, you know, we want to support the youths as best as we can to make sure that your voices are heard. And that's why we are having this conversation. That's why we have that platform. And we believe that this is the beginning of channeling our energy. And Pastor T uh, will come up and speak at the end as well. So um, we're very grateful for those of you that in spite of everything, you're still speaking and we hope that you'll continue to speak. We'll continue to encourage and support you to speak up until we get that Nigeria that you deserve, that will work for you. So we're going to open it up for questions. I don't know if Pastor Sonny has anything to to um, to to say before we open it up for questions. Pastor Sonny. Uh, no, no, I'm fine. Uh, let, okay. Let us go on for the question straight. Okay, thank you. So we are going to, the way we usually do this, um, if we're going to ask you to unmute and then maybe you can direct your question to someone. Um, 30 seconds because we have a few hands up. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to, Auntie, good evening, Ma. Go ahead, Ma. <laughs> uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Thank you, Pastor. This is awesome. Talking to young people, you know, let, hearing it from the horse's mouth is so critical to everything we're doing. Everything we're doing is really about them. So having this opportunity to speak to Caleb and, and, um, and uh, is it Joshua and Peace is, is, is a privilege. And I want to thank them for having the courage, for having the intellectual capacity to speak to us about the issues and to appear anyway <laughs> determined to take responsibility for their future. My question is quite simple. Um, I listened to a program, a morning brief, I think, channels this morning, and the head of the NASFAT, I think this is the um, Islam um, uh, group association, uh, this, this person was the past chairman, and he was asked by the present one of the presenters that you know as a muslim uh, what should you do to take responsibility as a muslim citizen or as citizens what should you do to take responsibility for uh, 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 holding your leaders accountable and his response was that is not part of the islamic creed that in islam the leaders are enjoined to look after the citizens, to be responsible, to have integrity, but that the citizens don't have that responsibility to hold them accountable, that they should leave them to God. Now, I mean, I hold, I respect every religion and every human being. Uh, and, and from that, I mean, I was a little shocked because I didn't, actually know that this was part of the Islamic tenet. Now, one of the responsibilities of you young people is to have the knowledge of, you know, the reality of the issues or the, uh, um, the environment in which you are working. Now, in a respectful way, in a, a way that acknowledges and respects um, a youth like yours, who belongs to another religion or another tribe or another culture that thinks differently from what you have been saying today. Because one of you talked passionately about holding leaders accountable and, and, and um, seeing what you can do, what plans you can have to make sure that they listen to you and they do what you want. Now, in such an environment, environment what would you do what as you young people what would you do to deal with this kind of difference and diversity uh, because you have to work with other colleagues in other religions in other tribes etc so my question is having the knowledge of this kind of disparities because you have to work together as young people you cannot have a divided house what would you do individually and collectively to join hands with these different peers to, to, to chart the course you 
advocated so passionately today. Thank you once again for having the courage and the intellectual capacity and the integrity to come here today and speak to us. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Auntie. I look at your question and then I'll uh, give it to one of them to answer. So we're going to have Kunle from Electoral College. Go ahead, Kunle. I've asked you to unmute. Good day, everyone. And I would first like to thank, of course, Auntie Jumoke of ELG and Pastor Itua Ibodalo, my senior brothers, my senior, brother, my senior people, on um, giving the opportunity to the youth. Now, the opportunity to the youth is not being granted normally. I'd like to salute their courage. I would like to give respect to them. Mine is a comment, not a question. I'll first tell you something. You cannot, um, as much as, I think the mistake the youth has made, my, my generation made that mistake, and that's generation 35, 45. They made that mistake. Um, they bought in emotional um, perspectives, and they cannot engage without an emotional response. You cannot, in a democracy, engage a system that you don't understand. You will fail. You will fail numerous number of times. Trust me, if I haven't made that mistake, I won't be telling you exactly what I'm telling you. So we've, we've, all, we've, all, we've all made those mistakes. So I'll give you three tips. One, you cannot ascend the throne you do not respect. And I'd assume if you, if you adopt if you, if, you, if you look into Christian literature, you're going to find out that um, David, was already, um, so David was already anointed when Saul threw his spear at him. He didn't, if he were Nigerian, he would have told Saul that, you know what, they don't anoint me already now. Wait till they throw spear at me. I'm the next king. But he didn't. You can't ascend the throne you don't respect. I'll tell you this for free. And I'm, 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 I'm telling you because I'm still on my path. I'm still on my journey. I'm mid-generation, and it's, it's great to be able to have this conversation with you. But I'll tell you what's most critical. You cannot demand accountability if you do not understand the system. Because you're going to go about it the wrong way. You're saying leaders should be this, leaders should be that, leaders should be that. No. Two critical questions I'm, gonna, I'm going to put forward to you. Do you understand the system enough to understand where a leader should be responsible? Then secondly, do you participate enough for them? And this is not me putting a burden on you. This is me just understanding from the mistakes I've made earlier and presenting you a new template that you could make better. I'll tell you, any one of you, any one of you can be Kuli Lawal, can be Okay, Pastor, it tries a little big, but you can't be him. <laughs> you, you try hard enough. And any one of you can. But I'll tell you, it's hard work, tenacity. And most of all, if you do not love Nigeria, you cannot push Nigeria forward. So all that comments, I mean, Nigeria not happened to you. You are using your tongue to say things that are negative. Love your country. Find out what your country is actually about. Find out what the exact laws your country are. And then engage from an understandable perspective. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, LG, for, for this time. Thank you. Thank you, Kunle, for your contributions. Um, can I have Uvia Victory? Please go ahead. We've asked you to unmute. Unmute and ask your question. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, to continue on already existed protocol, my name is Uvia Victory. Um, first off, I want to contribute and ask a question. The uh, topic of today is talking on citizen responsibilities as, as, a, as youth of our country, as youth of Nigeria. Um, for, um, and we know that a responsibility um, simply implies the roles we can we do we, we carry out as individual or collaboratively. To promote, uh, to promote the country or to promote herself. And what I would like to say is that because I actually engage a youth at my place of primary assignments concerning the change, how you can begin the change you want to. And he was like, 
we cannot change. It's actually a youth. It should be around 30, 30 35. He, he was telling me that he cannot change what has already existed. Like, um, I would say overexposure to greed and corruption can actually make one irresponsible because it was trying to say that um the the leaders the leaders or that we are looking up to or the people we're actually looking up to are already corrupted already corrupt and we we are like learning from them it was trying to say if it becomes if that um, i was conversing with a youth he said if he becomes the president of this country tomorrow he's going to lie he's going to be corrupt he's going to do corruption and i was trying to let him know that you can actually change those things you don't want. Instead of joining, he said, um, if you want to join, if you, if you don't want to join, you won't go far because of what we actually see. Let's take, for instance, to the incident that happened on Saturday at the at the uh, Ali Moshele government, where we see that a, a youth couple of uh, a volunteer was trying to video what the the illegal movement of the palliative that one of one of because I actually look at the, the shirts that one of the guys were, was putting on. He was putting on a, a past uh, there was one I actually forgot the name was like food members. He was wearing a t-shirt, a customized one. This is somebody that is supposed to be organizing and making sure that the purpose of that uh, meeting, the purpose of that program is met and you are trying to disrupt it. You are trying to scatter it. And I would like to say that some of these youths that, you know, we always want to say um, the youth are the leaders of tomorrow, the youth are this, the youth are that, and we just want to try to push blames to the youth and say ah, the youth are not doing well, the youth are not coming out, the youth are not functioning, the youth are sleeping. Any little thing is only is channeled to the youth. I would say that for that, it's a no for me because we see that most youths are ready to to serve the youth are ready to to function and we see that the leaders that we are looking up to are the one corrupting corrupting the youth making them to change their narrative to change their mind i would definitely say don't, don't can you hear me hello yeah we can hear you if you can move away from where there's background noise it would be great yes we can okay so like what I was saying, the youths, we the youths, we are ready. I'm speaking for myself, we, and the few persons I've come across, we're actually ready to save. We're actually ready to make the change, to create a change, to be the change we want, or want for our country and for ourselves. But we see that most of our leaders are actually the ones corrupting us. Because while I had the conversation with a friend of mine some days back about us changing the narrative that, that is going on, Obia, you are muted. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. okay. Are we can we hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. If you can round up, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. So now my question is how do we how do we work on this? This part of the leaders corrupting us because I believe those scouts at that local government that are trying to to hurt those parties, we actually sent by leaders we're actually sent by someone who is greater we're actually sent by maybe somebody that is higher than them so how do you do this how do we try to change okay i think can we still hear how is it me so i think we, we okay. yeah i i think the question is how do we change the leaders that continue to perpetuate this wrongdoing, right? If I yeah. if I can summarize that, okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Um, may I have Juliet? Please ask your question, and then I'll have Ulu Yinka and then Deborah. Okay. Good evening, Chimoke. Good evening. Good evening, my my president, and um, you're doing a good job. Now, my question is, and I'm not taking it to anyone, anybody can answer it. Now, for many years, the national security and social development of Nigeria has been threatened by the activities of insurgents, 
and rebel groups. These violent groups and other organization, organized crime syndicates have ravaged Nigeria's national security. However, since youths are at the forefront of the rebellion and perpetuation of many crimes. Now, my question is how, if they are craving to rule, how are we sure that they are able to do this? How do, can they provide solution? Because if, you're, if you look at um, the terrorists, Boko Haram, kidnapping, bandits, um, area boys, and then this issue of uh, transgender, they are all youths. So how are they contributing to make sure that these things are corrected and these people come out from whatever wrong they are doing? How are we sure that if power is handed over to them, they are going to lead because I believe all these things being seen, people will be scared of giving or handing over power to the youths. So how can they possibly make us to understand that they are able to prefer solution for this country, Nigeria? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, Olu Yinka, please go ahead. And we will take those, we'll take those four and then go to the next one. Um, Please go ahead, Olu Yinka, with your question. Thank you very much, Ma. Good evening for um, everyone. Um, so first thing I want to say, I just have comments uh, to exhort everyone to help us uh, move forward. Interestingly, Alimosho local government is a place I've lived, it's my constituency I've lived in Alimosho since 1982. But the first thing I would advise is uh, for young people, I count myself, I, I won't talk to you, so I'll say young people, myself inclusive, chat your part, okay? Politics is not the only medium that can get anyone into governance. Even boardroom governance is there in the society. Help is needed across board. People excel in, spe uh, in sports. That Yamusa, she comes in today. Uh, I forget that that lady who we celebrated recently. If Anthony Joshua comes in, uh, Mikel Obi comes in, okay, they have voices. Ahmed Musa, they have voices. They will find their way into government before the rest of us. So chart your own path. Sports, NGO, education. Uh, interestingly, so to get a fully funded scholarship to do a PhD now, you can't be older than 35. So if you want that, then now is the time to start. Uh, which takes me to my second point. Choose your own standpoint. You see, um, the thing is, uh, we think that by the goodness of our hearts, we can get into office. No, it, it doesn't happen at all. So for me today, if I was going into public office, especially in that, I'll most likely be in APC. I'll be in APC trying to work from within, trying to support and all of that. That's just me saying. So choose your standpoint. It's the individual that builds institutions. It's not us against them. Us against them, all of us will be like, only uh, who won't get into office only because they are fighting the system. The third thing, the third thing is raising new leaders. It's a deliberate process. Before this dispensation, I, I recollect that I was with Pastor Itwa. And I was talking about us uh, championing a, a sizable number of seats in the National Assembly being taken. You know, uh, that is something that we could consider again and again and again, just ensuring that we target the low hanging fruits and, and we try to uh, get in there before we, we hope we remain good to change the system. Number four, let's never assume that youths are not in public office. I think that is a wrong notion. The governors, the present governor of Kogi State, the former go governor of Kogi State, were young people. They are young. Dimeji Bankoli was a young person in government. There are still young people in office today. In, in, in the State House of Assembly in Kwara State, there's a young lady there in her 20s. So young people get into office, but who takes them there? They are answerable to their parents and their fathers and their godfathers who have been nurturing them. So it will it behoves on other sectors also to get young people in there and train them like AOG is doing at the moment, so that you can say oh, we've got somebody in there who we help to get there and we show that that person do right. And then finally, for me, the constitutional amendment process. I was looking at it a couple of days ago, and you won't believe it that resident electoral commissioners must be at least forty years old. And the chairman of VINEC must be at least 50 years old. That's in our constitution. And I was shocked. So it looks to me like there's a deliberate process to ensure that young people don't get into government. And we need to start considering it. It may be a mindset thing, and we need to address that. Uh, those are my own comments. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. And um, so we'll take the last set of hands, but I want to get two questions here, one from um, Auntie Yemi Sira and some Kuti. And uh, I would ask one of our youths to please address that question. How do you deal with cultural and religious differences? Uh, she cited the example of uh, something that she had um, from an, uh, an, an Islamic clergy. So uh, we're dealing with diversity, with a diverse culture. So how do you, how will you address those differences, difference of opinion, difference of beliefs based on your culture and your religion? Which of you, who, who amongst you want to take that question? Uh, who wants to take Hello, that Aure. question? Okay, who, who 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 is taking that question? Josh. Okay, go ahead, Joshua. Go ahead, Joshua. Okay, ma. Um, as regards the question, do do you want to move around a little bit? Okay, we are, we are, your 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 sound is choppy. Do you want to move somewhere closer where, where your network is better? Try again now. Okay, yes, we can hear you better now. Okay, so I said, um, if I got it right, it was accountability of leaders to be left to God according to the Islam religion. I respect that it should be respected because that is what they believe in. But now, we on the other side, that we know what accountability is all about, we can still work with them and even make it better in the sense that before this leader, as they can make a difference, we can ensure that we don't just put anyone there. We can work together with them. Okay, your belief is accountability is left to God. This has no problem. Now let's put people of proven integrity into these positions so that you don't have to hold them accountable. But we, though we know they are of proven integrity, we can still hold so that's just all I have to say. Thank, thank you. That's a very good point. And let's not neglect to say that there is an expectation of them, by the, their religion expects them to be accountable, to have integrity. So if they violate that, that's on them, but there is an expectation. So what you are saying is that we should hold them to what the religion also um, holds them to. Thank you very much. Uh, before I take other hands, I want to call on Uche. Uche wrote an article uh, from the Saturday Experience. I would be sharing that later on. But Uche, if you are on, can you just chime in your comments and then we'll uh, take the other questions. Go ahead, Uche. Is, is, yesterday is Uche on the platform? I know he's yeah. been going in and out. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, a couple of times. Okay. So if if well if you can unmute, maybe we'll we'll take the other question. Good Sorry? evening. No, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Chime in. Thank you for that article that you wrote. It, it really summarized it, and it's something that I think we will publish because it really speaks to you, that experience. So if you can just uh, summarize. I and speak to us a little bit, we would appreciate that. Chime in. Okay. Okay. All right, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. And thanks for the organizers of this um, platform and initiative for all their efforts to see towards a positive change and growth in our country. One of the things I would like to point out to is the area of um, servant leadership. And I would like to point out to the fact that leadership starts with oneself. That's the first thing I, I would like us to really understand for myself too. Because you can't you can't change the system if you yourself you are not changed. So it's about you becoming 
a follower of yourself, of your own principles and values. Now, the question now is, is if you get to that post or or to that um office, are you are you going to to buy into the systems you've made there, or you will use your own values to change the systems there? So that's the first thing. And then I think the major issue that that really played out on doing our outreach was the issue of godfatherism, you know, older politicians using the younger ones as tools. And that was one of the things I actually summarized in the article when I said older politicians have monopolized the political system, that it becomes difficult for a young person to break the barrier. Then statistics has um, shown that youth's participation in Nigeria is relatively low compared to other sectors like business or the entertainment industry. You know, these these older politicians use youth as, uh, you know, as political talks or party talks, you know, using them as tools like that, you know, as um, to extract their Togri values and all that. And whereas ignoring the fact that, like, lies in every youth is an yeah, uh, intrinsic leadership potential that needs to be to be tapped into. So we really need um, to actually put certain structures in place. But my emphasis this evening for now is just that leadership starts with oneself. We can point out to, you know, to the older politicians, to the system and this and that. But if we ourselves, we are not transformed ourselves first, we will see that when we get to that particular place, it will be very, very difficult for us to break the barrier. Instead, we will just continue from where they actually stopped. Our previous speakers mentioned some like some um youths, you know, governors and all that that are still there, and yet it is what they have uh, their you know godfathers or their predecessors left that they have continued. So it's about oneself. And let me also say something that you know, changing the system or like instilling your own values and principles comes at a cost. That is one thing you have to understand uh, as a leader. And you must be willing to pay that price. So if you are not willing to pay that price, if you will bow at, at, at just the first instance of pressure, then I don't think you are you're actually capable of becoming a leader because every leader will carry his own cross. Yes. So firstly, we have to check ourselves and make sure that, okay, what are the values that a leader is supposed to have? Do I possess those values? And then what are the character traits I can see that is, you know, reminiscent or common like to the presence leaders that I have to change. You can just write down that in a journal and, you know, start start a path to self-development and growth. So just then I mentioned in my article about electoral malpractices, political violence, um, I think, you know, stuff like that. Then I said there are several challenges faced by young politicians trying to break the Nigeria's uh, political terrain, like electoral acts, tribalism, and ethnicity, you know, a highly monetized political system, lack of support from the unpopular political parties and all that. You see, because even I myself, I was a victim of all these things right there on Saturday. In fact, I had to include in, I think I was I was given the privilege to write like a brief summary of the report of what really happened. And I mentioned how, like, because I actually stood at where they were occluding some of those palliatives from the boss and I was in one corner. I didn't even know one of the chief talks was observing me. Before I knew five guys had already surrounded me, you know, threatening me and they started beating me up, asking me to delete the video of the recording and everything. I had no option than to delete it because they were in fact they nearly even smashed my phone. So that is what we are talking about. So it's about it's about who they have. So we have a very long way to go. And to to conquer these these issues, we we have to first instill positive values in ourselves. That's the first thing, because if you are not changed, you can't change others. So change starts from within. So um, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that brilliant contribution. I appreciate you. And uh, Mr. President was asking earlier on, are uh, you can you confirm that you are indeed a youth? Um, that you feel you fit in within that age group that we call youth? 
Yes, please confirm. I know you are part of the ALG Youth um, en Engagement Initiative. Are you a youth? Oh, okay. I think, okay, yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. Um, okay. Just wanted um, you to I'm, confirm that. Yes, of course. Ma. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Ma. For the record. Yes. Thank you. So we would make your article. I, I thought that was a very good article so that we would have that published and circulated to um ALG family as well. So thank you for writing that. Thank you for your report. Um, So we're going to take the last four hands and then we would bring the session to a close. We are up on the hour. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to take any more hands after. So we're going to take um, Latif, uh, Ungozi, Pastor Funke, and then Deborah. Those are the last hands that we're going to take. If you could please keep it quick, and then I'll bring up Pastor Tayo. We would do an announcement, and then we would be we'll close <laughs> the session. Please go ahead, um, Latif. Um, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my evening. name is Lati, and um, I'm glad I'm um, on the call right now. Um, I've really gained insight on um, some citizen responsibility. For me, uh, I've always seen um, politics as something that I don't really want to uh, get myself involved in. And I feel because of, like, it's something that I, I might have to compromise, and I don't really want to compromise on this aspect. Uh, I want to quickly um, add some clarity to this Islamic um, stand on um, accountability of leaders is holding your leaders accountable. Um, um, in one of our hadiths, it's uh, permit me to quote this. Um, this is thirty four, um, and it was reported by Abu Said. It said, I "Had the messenger of Allah say, whosoever view sees an evil, let him change it with his hand." If he's not able to do so, let him change it with his tongue. And if he's not able to do so, then with his heart. And that is the weakest of faith. So um, in Islam, it's not that we don't really speak against injustice. And this is not just by individuals alone, also our leaders. But the fact that um, in Islam, lead, any position you are in is not just you being in that position. It's like an heart of worship. You are literally worshipping through that position. So is an Hamana on you. Your region. So whatever you do is something that you are going to be accountable for, not just in this world and in the year after. So this um, I feel the challenges because people that understand this, like they have this um integrity, they understand that. Um, this position is just not me being in this position per se, but it's also part of my religion. Mostly shy away from this position because they don't want to compromise. So I feel this is one of the challenges we um, have when it comes to um, the aspect to um, leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you for that clarification. I appreciate that. Um, may I have Ungozi, please go ahead and ask your question. Or your comments. Uh, we've asked you to unmute. Ungozi, please go ahead. Good evening, everybody. Um, Good evening, thank Sister you for the youth for, Thank you for the youth for participating today. And mine is not a question, it's actually a comment. Um, someone had um, said earlier um, about the youth being responsible for, for insurgency and and Pergri and all of that, and it's something that I, I want to um, speak to. So the, the youth, um, they have a lot of energy. So, and when you don't create an enabling environment for them to expend this energy, then they can be easily exploited. Um, a, a young person graduates from the university and for six, seven years, they can't get a job. Um, immigration announces for recruitment and 100,000 youth show up and there's a stampede and some of them die. So you don't create the environment, an even environment for them to expend all this energy they have. So these same politicians and leaders are the ones that exploit them because someone is bankrolling the thuggery, someone is bankrolling the um, insurgency. 
and this 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 money bag that are doing it. And the youth have nothing to do. I mean, they are not gainfully um, engaged or employed. So what is available to them is, you know, what these politicians and money bags have to offer. Because you can either channel this energy for good or you can channel it for evil. Um, I think there was um, a guest on this um, platform that spoke several weeks ago. I think he was um, he was talking on agriculture and he was talking about the fact that there was barely any insurgency in Jigawa State because they had created these agri programs where youth are being fully en engaged. And it's actually this youth that helped to fight the insurgency. If you go to the eastern part of the country where I come from, um, the vigilantes are also the youth that are gainfully and you know engaged and are being used to fight um, crime and all this kind of things. So if you don't create an enabling environment for them to channel their energy, then they will be exploited. So I don't I don't agree with somebody blaming the youth for thuggery and insurgents and all this type of things and saying that if they are given the opportunity to be in leadership, how can they be trusted because of all these things? Um, so that is really my contribution. I don't blame the youth for it. The enabling environment for them has not been created to get to engage and employ. And that is why they are looking for other means to expand their energy is either leaving the country or um or being um, exploited by these people because I mean they have to eat, they have to feed. Um and 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 so I, I think that is where the problem is. So that is my contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much for those contributions. And as one of them stated earlier on, it's these corrupt leaders that 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 are their role model. So we need to change that as well. Thank you for this contribution. If I can have Pastor Funke Awolowo and um, Deborah, please go ahead and ask your question, uh, Pastor Funke. Good evening, everybody. And oh, I almost missed that program. Uh, it's certainly very useful at this time. I heard somebody say they should refrain from that um, notion of us against them. And um, it sounds um, really, really pitiful because that is what it is. Most of our youth, they've never really experienced real governance. You know, I tell, I share, that there was a time when people, after getting graduated, they had jobs waiting for them. The system, you know, helped them with cars, with homes and everything. They have not experienced that. And so it's not them, you know, what we saw in NSARS, was then telling us, you know, what is happening? Get up, parents, get up, government, get up, everybody, and do right by us. And really, I must say, the system has really failed them because really what we call righteousness is almost what when it gets to this, um, when you talk about the youth. Yesterday, I was talking to, you know, the chairman of the Labour Party, Lagos State, and she was explaining to me how her maid said she had to leave the house because somebody had to sit the exam for her and everything. She was saying it as a matter of fact thing. I must tell you, most of the degrees we see coming, churning out of Nigeria now, 70%, if not 60, if not half, have been written by other people. And that's why standards have gone down. And what has forced them to that system is because nothing, like somebody was saying, how accountable are we? People, after doing all sorts of atrocities, they are not put to the book. They don't, you know, we don't see people going to prison for what they did. And um, that is making the system really warped and funny. We need to pray for this youth. We need to guide them. Yes, you know, because I'm in Labour Party, I see a lot of them. Somebody said, uh, somebody was speaker, this guy, you know, that was speaker, because his parents, you know, had new food, you know, to, in, to put him there. But what we are seeing with Labour Party, with Peter Obi, I must mention that, is that people that you consider to be nobodies, they're getting into power. You know, he said if he was, somebody mentioned that if he was in Ali Mosho, he will be with APC. Why would you be in APC? Really, really, if we look at the facts and figures, Labour Party won Ali Mosho. 
And I'm telling you, there's so many places. And, and Funke, I'm have... sorry to, to badge in on you. This is not a plug for Labour Party. You know, we are non-partisan. So we well, don't want you to come okay, across okay. that. I'm just a plug saying for Labour it Party. by the way, okay. that you don't need you. to be in with the corrupt leaders, that when you speak and you persevere, and you know, you don't know what can happen. So, you know, you must not always align with the parties that be. That's what, you know, I want to change that mindset. You must continue to speak, represent yourself, air your views, and something will give. Don't always, you know, ally with the corrupt parties, you know, because they're doing it so wrong. So that's what I'm saying. Sorry that Labour Party has to come up, but that's the example <laughs> no, for now. Thank, thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. I thank appreciate you. that. And I think to mm -hmm. your point, align with the party that, I mean, go with the party that aligns with your principles and your values not Thank necessarily you. the ones that are in, in power. So that, yeah. I think that that's very clear. Thank you for making that. And I just wanted to make that clarification um, because we are non-partisan. We just want to be clear that we are not uh, a partisan organization okay. um, okay. of Nigeria. So thank you that for that. Works. That works. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate, appreciate that. So I'm going You're to bring welcome. Pastor Tayo to please speak. And then once he's done, we have a couple of announcements and then would hand over to uh, to Mr. President for the closing remark. Go ahead, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. This has been very exciting. First of all, I want to thank the youth. Uh, the uh, uh, definition of youth, according to the African Youth Charter, is 15 years to 35 years. So uh, it's very important that we know that. And I think they also went through a thorough analysis of discussions at different levels in different nations of those that belong, the nations that constitute the African Union, to be able to come out with that frame. If you look at the UN frame, they use 15 to 24, but nonetheless, I think 15 to 35 represents the bulk of the youth in Africa very effectively. That is number one. Uh, next, uh, this session has actually been able to highlight the context of youth as their role and participation, not only in the political process, but actually their challenges and their voices. They, we've also had their contributions. Uh, and then there are considerations that they have made and some other speakers have also spoken to. Now is the change initiative. Uh, let me read uh, a paragraph statement that I put together a while ago just to talk about citizen responsibility, good governance, and values. By values, a nation is shaped. By responsible citizens, a nation is built. By, to, by right leadership, a nation is maintained. And by good governance, the nation prospers, and together we will sustain the nation. If you look at this quote, uh, you've all spoken about values, but then the emphasis on citizen responsibility. The values shape a nation. And one of our beginning courses is going to be the CRC uh, basics, which actually will be addressing national values. We'll be addressing the three R's of uh, citizens, which is the rights of citizens, the roles of citizens, and the responsibilities of citizens. And then we're going to be addressing some of the things you have also mentioned, what I call the BACA, which is being an active citizen, sorry, being uh, becoming a uh, BACA, becoming a citizen activist, sorry, becoming a citizen activist. I think it is important. Sometimes we assume that we know what to do, and uh, but we need to all be instructed. When the president started, that's Pastor Itwa, he started with four eyes. I want to expand that, and some of you have mentioned some eye characteristics that we need to consider as we look at building the youth capacity to actually bring about positive change, particularly in the political and public service space. Number one, uh, uh, you know, the president, Pastor Itwa, said ignorance. Uh, 
Number two, I not well informed, and I want the youth to take this into consideration as they all continue to pursue the path of bringing together a change in Nigeria for a better Nigeria. Ignorance. We cannot play with ignorance. Number two, not well informed. It is important that you get well informed. Thank you, Kunle Lawa, for bringing that into much more focus. You have to understand the nation that you belong to. If you talk without understanding, you will not be able to affect change. Number three, indifferent. You cannot be indifferent. Young men and young women, we want to encourage you, you cannot be indifferent. You must participate and you must be committed in your participation. Again, Kunle Lawa made us to understand that it takes tenacity, it takes hard work, and it takes resilience to see positive change. It's not something going to be handed to you on a platter of gold or just in the hands. Number four, involvement. You have to be involved. And involvement will not be on the surface level. You have to keep getting involved. And thank you for all that participated in the outreach on Saturday. That's initial involvement. That's when you can see the challenges. Now we can pull back, reflect on the lessons learned, and then arm ourselves to face this. Uh, when the, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? When the situation in the Arab youth, Arab uh, space happened, it was young men and women. They didn't carry guns. They, all, they only had a determination, but they were well informed. They knew where the challenges and issues were. They had studied their constitution and they knew what they needed to do. And so it is important that young men and young women, young Nigerians be well informed. And this information is available. You are, you are all living in a digital age, so you have access to internet. At, the, at your fingertips, you can Google any information and it will give you a series of information, valid data that you can learn from. And then number five, you must be inspired. The, an inspiration comes through challenges. It's when you face challenges that you're able to be more inspired to see a change from the challenge. Number six, you must be well instructed. Instructions are important. And again, I appeal to parents, to older adults, we have to, and of course, some of our mommies here have mentioned that we have to guide these young men and women with instructions. Number seven, there has to be investment of your talent, of your time, of your treasure, and of, of course, of your uh, uh, skills, knowledge, and abilities to see change. And you cannot pull back. So investment of your time and talent, once again, thank you for the group that invested their time and their talent to be at that Saturday outreach. And we will, of course, have many more outreaches, not just distributing palliatives, but outreaches that will co go to the communities to engage the grassroots, to talk to them and to gain their hearts and their minds. Number nine, you must be industrious. And we've talked about that youth, the youth of Nigeria in particular, and the youth of Africa are very, very talented. But you must be very industrious, and that's where hard work comes in. So it cannot just be you have the potential. You have to release the potential and continue to press forward until you reach the mark that brings about the positive change. Number nine, or whatever the number is, I wrote everything down. Yeah, you must ten now. You must share your ideas. It is important. We need to hear your ideas. Don't just continue to listen to what is happening and say, well, the old politicians are doing this. If you have an idea, bring it forth. Speak forth not only the concerns or the challenges, but speak forth the ideas. Think through something and think through how change can be made. Accountability can be done. If you bring ideas, particularly somebody put a poster on the citizen's responsibility and ask a question, how can we use technology to, uh, 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 to bring about positive change in governance? And that's a question we can all you know, get onto and start thinking about it. And when we put minds together, we will find a solution. Uh, Zuckerman, who created Facebook, it was just an idea the Google guys, it was an idea. So come up with your own ideas, young people, and we'll be willing to process it, think through it, and craft it in a way by which we can bring it out and challenge the government or whatever levels of government we need to challenge. Numbers, uh, whatever the number, inclusivity Eleven. is important. <laughs> 
We must be inclusive. Yes, I, I, I have it numbered. You must, you must be inclusive. And I like the uh, young lady who spoke about accountability in the Islamic religion. We also, the same thing, the Christian religion believes that our leaders are accountable to God, first and foremost. But we're also accountable to one another. You are accountable to the environment where you are. And thank the lady once again who brought in the issue of values. There are cohesive universal values between the Islamic religion and the Christian religion that we can weave together and make it a national universal values whereby each and every one of us adopt and we must live by. So we're going to be talking about values orientation in the citizen responsibility basics. When we get our values right, it will shape our nation. And when citizens are responsible, it will build the nation. And then, of course, when we have good governance, we're able to manage and sustain the nation. Uh, next, you all talked about issues. That's the starting point, issues. Identify the issues, read the newspapers, and thank God for those on the citizen responsibility uh, platform who graduated from the first class, who bring about the issues that come about in print media, in uh, not only in print media, on social media, but bring about the issues. Don't just post the video or not. R look, listen to the video, watch the video, extract out the issues that are pertinent in what you watch, and then share it among yourself as you youth, think about it, uh, discuss it, and come about with ideas and innovation for solutions for change. Next, integrity. And that's going to form some of the value training that we're going to be doing. And then we talked about institutions. I like what uh, Ola Inka said about institutions, that it is people who build institutions. Institutions don't just appear in vacuum. It is you and I. And building an institution has no uh, regard for age. It also actually has regard for understanding of process, how institutions work, principles, values, guide and direct institutions. And so it is important. And we encourage you young people to be very participatory in what is happening and learn about the institutions of government, learn about the institutions of nation building, the institutions that enhance uh, you know, the, the greatness of a nation. Next, you talked. Uh, we talked about um, Still on the eye, just a little bit, I need to get yeah, insights, and I will end with that. Uh, we need to gain insights for what is happening in other nations. You see, we are not an isolated nation by ourselves. We are within a continent that has 59 nations. And there are insights of uh, great things that young men and young women are doing in other nations that you can learn from, that we also as adults can learn and we can put together and bring about change in our country. I want to thank all the youth. I can go on, but I think we'll be able to uh, consolidate what you have said, youth voices. I want to share three or four quotes uh, that some of you had said, and which is pretty very good. Uh, you know, you said youths are ready to serve and to make the change. Thank you very much. And, and, and we know you are ready to serve and you have put a challenge to us to equip you, empower you and grant you the support that would enable you to serve more. Um, just a quick reflection on um, uh, elderly lady who talked about the, percent, the youth who are uh, part of insecurity. Yes, there are young people in, in those gangs and groups and insecurity. But let me tell you, from my research and statistics, they constitute only between 2 to 3% of the pop. They are not even up to 3% of the population of the youth you have in any African country. So you can see that we have a greater percentage of youth who are willing to serve, who are willing to make a change. But we need to empower them. We need to arm them. The little percentage of youth that are in insurgency, they are empowered. They are empowered with tools, with weapons. We need to give our own youth that are in more percentage with weapons of knowledge, weapons of technology, and weapons of financial resources to enable them to counter you know, those that have weapons of warfare. We're inviting you to citizens' responsibility course. Young men and young women, we're going to be holding this course continually. We're also going to be uh, uh, working on bringing it on a learning system by which you can self-learn it. And once you get hold and grip of the national values, 
you get hold of the rights, roles, and responsibilities of a citizen, and you get hold of what it means to become uh, an active, uh, a citizen activist, and then a citizen leader. I can tell you, we will see change in Nigeria. So be encouraged, be strengthened. The journey is long. It's not a sprint, but a marathon. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for that uh, wrap-up. And uh, as Pastor T said, he is the Director of Training at uh, Solage School of Leadership and Governance. Uh, most of you are registered for the courses that are coming out of that. And it's part of what we the programs or initiatives that we have to support and empower our youth. Right now, we have the PM classes going on. Uh, Pastor T is starting the Citizens Responsibility class tomorrow and uh, we believe that will equip you to become those ambassadors for change so uh thank you to those that have signed up we expect you to be in class tomorrow you will get that information we also have a class on financial personal financial management so these are part of the things that um the africa leadership group is doing to empower our youths, not just to be change agents, but to be responsible, ethical, accountable leaders. We also have the Itwa Olajide Godalo uh, mentorship program, which uh, pairs veteran leaders with the uh, up and coming youths. And it's, it's some of you uh, on this platform are already engaged in that. So there are so many ways that you can get involved. Uh, we put out a lot of information call for you to engage. A uh, few of you joined the, the call last week, and we now have a very active youth engagement platform. We're glad that you are doing that. So come alongside us, whether it, if you can't give your time, you can give your money. There are a lot of initiatives that need your support. We need resources. There's a lot that we are going, doing at ALG, but it takes everyone. Uh, we want to be in partnership with as many civil society organizations that share our vision and the mission of this organization. So please just get involved. They, we are building this. This Nigeria is for our youth. Pastor Awolowo, uh, Pastor Punke said something about the Nigeria they didn't have, but the Nigeria that we have. So I believe we have a moral obligation and a responsibility to support the youths for that Nigeria that will work for them. So thank you, everyone. Thank you to the youths, uh, to the ALG Youth Initiative. We are so glad you came. And I, I hope you are encouraged that you have your voice. Your voice has been heard. And that the thing that happened on Saturday, even though it was not so good, but something positive came out of it. It gave you an opportunity to be heard, to speak. And we will continue to engage in, the, in those conversations to bring good out of what would have been something so negative. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your courage. And um, we look forward to more engagement with you. Uh, Yetunde, before we bring up uh, Mr. President, do you have additional comments for the youth platform? I know a lot of them didn't get a chance to speak because we are up on the hour. And maybe we'll continue this conversation and have a publication that we would send to the public later. Yes, and any other any last comments before we hand over to thank Mr. You President? Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you, thank you. Um, well, I don't think I have a lot to say because a lot has been said. Um, questions um have been answered. And I think Professor Tayo wrapped it up, you know, there were yes. several questions asked about how do we solve this problem, how do we make this happen, how do we change this? And I believe that um from all of what the Sky said, answers can be found there. So yes. being in class will make a lot of sense. And then, um, like um, the VP said, collaboration for me, I think is very important. Whether you are serving as a volunteer or whether you are serving with your resources. When you serve with your resources, it's another way to collaborate. Collaboration is not just about, oh, we come together and we go there to go and carry table, carry chairs. It's beyond that. So when we bring in our resources, time, ideas, finances, and everything, the heart to serve and you will see that change happen. Then the Thanks. change that we are looking for is going to happen. So we Thank look forward to many adults supporting 
the younger generation. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, thank you Pastor T. Handing over to you, Mr. President, for your closing. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, I think we may have um, his network has been going in and out. So um, maybe Pastor Sonny, do you have any closing remarks? Okay. Uh, Joshua, thank you. I uh, don't know if you have any closing remark. You and peace or anyone from the youth engagement. Thank you all for, okay, Pastor Sonny, you are, you've unmuted. Any closing remarks from you? Um, thank you very much. Um Jim okay. and um, I want to thank all the youths that have spoken very well. I mean, um, we keep talking about the youths. The youths themselves have to be ready. They have to be aware of what the issues are, and they have to come up with superior solutions and um, ideas on how to move the nation forward. And that's why this... Um, citizens' responsibility course that we are doing, it's very important that um, the youth on the platform tell your friends to tell their friends to tell their friends to be part of this course and um, just how to engage confidently and um, what you need to do in your own little spaces. Um, the stories you heard about Nigeria in the 80s and the 70s, they are true. Um, it can be reenacted. Um, Nigeria can definitely get better and it will get better. So don't mind the things that you are seeing or what you hear or what is going on. If we didn't believe it could be better, we would not be doing what we are doing. And you have signed up to be part of that process. That means you also believe that it can be better and it will definitely be better. So let's keep engaging. Learn as much as you can. Be confident to challenge what is not working, um, you know, and um, we will keep making the progress we need to make until we see the Nigeria that we all want, that works for everyone, irrespective of your tribe, religion, background, age, it doesn't matter. This nation can definitely work for everyone. And um, we thank all our regulars who are on the platform, the elders that have shared words of wisdom. We keep pushing the narrative, and it will definitely get better from here on. Thank you very much, Jumoke. Thank you, uh, Yetunde and um, Joshua, Peace, and all the young people that have spoken up on the platform today. We really want to appreciate you. Thank you, Jumoke. God bless. Thank you. Good night, everyone. See you next week. Same time, same Zoom link. Have a good evening. God bless. Yeah. Thank you, Jumoke. Always Thank you so job. much, JMC and everyone. <laughs> Thank Good you, night. Good to Good see night. you. Stay Amen. blessed well done, and safe in the name of Thank Jesus. Thank you. Bye. Well Thank done, you, Joshua. Joshua. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Well folks. done, Joshua. Peace and all the youth. So proud yes. of you. You guys see that. We are so job. proud of you. Very, yes. very proud of you. Yes. Many you more. You're going to be great. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Surely, <laughs> surely they will be great. All right. Thank, thank you, you very Uche. much. Uh, Uche. I love we'll you. Be from you again. Yeah. Thank Uche. you. God bless you. Thank you, Ati. We'll, we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Yes, thank my you. dear. Well God done. Bless. Have a good night. Care. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. So I'm going to be ending um the session now.